the Atari XE GS, so the consolized version of the Atari XE system. Uh, this was sent in by a customer who is having some issues with it. Uh, we had a bit of a chat and he is getting a red screen when it's uh, plugged in and turned on. Uh, usually on these it indicates a RAM issue. Uh, it's uh, the red screen of death with the, uh, the Atari's, like the 400, the 800, the XE systems. So let's give it a test. We've got the power connector plugging into the backup here. We also have some video going to this one. We don't really need it, but let's plug sound in as well. And with the XE, I don't have any game cartridges, but what you can do is if you plug in the keyboard, which actually has a nice little hinge thing at the bottom here, that kind of sits on like that. Pretty slick, huh? But uh, that has a little port on the side here, underneath. And if we plug that in, like so, it should boot into a built-in basic ROM. So let's give that a test. Uh, here we go. And we're not actually getting anything at all. Hmm. We do have a green light for power, so it does have power at the moment. Just check on that video connections. Yeah, I get nothing. Okay. Well, that's worse than I was anticipating. So let's. Oh, let's just crack it open and see what we see. So it should be five screws on the bottom, I believe. And one in the middle. And then four around the sides. Yep, just little pretty standard screws into the middle. And then I believe also there will be a really big uh, RF shield. Uh, computers of this era, the uh, FCC was kind of going ham on them about <laughs> yeah, okay, about uh, emissions. So uh, big shield, but it doesn't. Oh, that's interesting. So it's actually the system should actually just fall out. Yeah, like so of the case. But what I'm interesting, what I'm finding is interesting is that the little tabs all around here, there's one there too, down the bottom here, they're all bent straight, which means someone's been in here before. Interesting. Okay, well anyway, makes life a little bit easier for me. So it means I can just pop this straight out and there we go. Actually fairly clean on the inside. Um, so, the RAM in these guys is in the bottom, there it is, so you got uh, 21464, two chips, they're Intel, it's pretty standard, DIP18, about on the bottom if we take the bottom shield off, if we even can, there we go. Fighter. There we go. Look at the bottom. Uh, so there's the RAM again. I think it looks fine down there. Uh, it's a little bit dirty, but that just looks like factory. I can't see. This could be some rework here. I don't know if that's coming through, but you can see a little bit of old extra crusty flux there. But that, yeah, that could definitely just be a uh, factory. Otherwise, this looks untouched, so I'm curious as to what someone else was doing inside here. But let's, uh, now that we're out of our metal cage, let's um, plug it in and see what we see again. So there's our got power light. Okay, uh, got keyboard again. And let's see what we get. 
Well, nothing. That is interesting. Hmm. I should be saying something out, putting. Hmm. Let's check a couple of voltages here and there. Just ground out to the uh, shield around the edge. Check the voltages coming out of the uh, 2.8, 2.8, 2.8, 1.1. Mm, these voltages seem very low. 2.8, let's check going into one of these. Hmm, yeah, that seems incredibly low. What is this power supply output? Okay, so it is a genuine Tire power supply. It's meant to be giving us five volts. So let's give that a test. It's actually that's rude. Five volts on pins one, four, six, and three, one, three, five, seven on this side. So let's unplug that. So these three pins should be five volt. Those three pins should be ground, and that one up in the middle should be. So let's give it a test. This is going to be interesting. Okay. And yeah, 5.24 volts. That seems fine. Let's plug it in and just check while it's running as well, while it's plugged in. Yeah, well, there's a negative. Well, it's, yeah, that's the right way. Let's the thing is the wrong way. And if we power it on. Ah, that's being dropped. So, we have a short somewhere that's dissipating. And you know what? I mean, that's, again, dead RAM is the cornerstone of what these. So if we just click that on, wait a second. Yeah, so this RAM chip down the bottom here is getting hot immediately. And that one at the top is fine. But this one, yeah. So I can give you a quick visual visualization on that. I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but if we just rub a little of alcohol on both of them and see how fast this one's evaporating, whereas that one's still wet from the first run through. So yeah, it's still wet. This guy's dried off. So yeah, this, this uh, RAM I see is shorting somewhere internally and it's dead. So yeah, that is still the same problem. I'm just kind of curious as to why it's not showing anything at all. Normally when that happens you get a uh, red screen like I noted but I guess if it is actually shorting and it's uh, uh, sinking too much current as heat uh, and the rest of the chips and whatnot don't have enough voltage to continue that would obviously cause that kind of brown edge brown out. So let's See if we can give it the right amount of voltage that it wants on the power supply. I'm guessing that volt, that uh, old power brick just can't drive enough power in. So let's give it as much power as we need from our bench supply. Let's unplug here. So that was... Well, let's double check. <laughs> So it's negative on the left, on the right. So we are looking for uh, positive is on that side, and negative is on this side. Okay. And then if we hit our thingy, so we're not drawing any current. We turn that on. It's immediately pulling one amp, and we have a signal, which is nothing. But look at that light, the LED is so much brighter now, and that chip is on fire. Yeah, and if we turn it off, yeah, there we go. Back on, yeah, it's, uh, it's not red, but it's not, uh, not a healthy signal either way. One of the keys you could hold down to get into basic directly as well, it might have been, I can't remember. Anyway, dead RAM. Obviously, 
uh, and it looks yeah it looks like a dead short internally which is sinking too much current and not allowing the rest of the chips to actually get enough voltage to run um, uh, yeah let's uh, let's rip those out oh god that guy is so hot when you give it too much current now unfortunately I don't have a amazing you know automatic desoldering iron so I'm gonna have to do this the old-fashioned way I have a bunch of wick and I have a desold pump and I have my soldering iron I have fresh solder so let's get to work Okay, now what I've got is a little tub full of my little sorted stuff, so all I'm going to do is get some heat, suck it out, rinse and repeat. Okay. Actually, looks like that's pretty good. Let's go on to the next one. Okay, they look pretty good. Out. And then out to they generally look good. Okay. And then what we're going to do. Definitely not reinstalling chips directly, but we're going to put in oh, too many some new 18-way uh, sockets. Obviously, they need to go on the top, and there is the marking on the board, so the notch in the socket goes to the left. Okay. Okay, let's just put a little touch of tape down. And that will just, uh, just hold them in place until I uh, can get some solder there. So I'm just going to put in opposite corners. Take off the tape, make sure that they are sitting yeah, beautiful, nice and flush, and finish up the soldering. Oof, that oh, looks like the board's bleeding. Next step, of course, well, we need to find some replacements. So these are Intel 21464. So 464 is a pretty standard RAM. Those are also 12. That 12 on the end means 120 nanoseconds. So in a system like this, that's way too fast. You don't need anything that good. Uh, 15 or even 18 is probably good enough. But uh, let's go through my... 
This is the RAM memory stuff. So these are 41, I can't even read that. These are 4164s. So these are for Commodore 64, like earlier revisions. And we've got some SN logic, and yes, right there. So these are, oh look, two, exactly. Got those out in a minute. But these are, I think they salvaged these from another Commodore 64C, like a later. These are, yeah, D41464C15. So they should be a good swap over. So let's just straighten those pins out and plump them in. A little bit more. Okay, one and Bit more. There we go. And two. Okay. Two rams successfully changed. Let's throw these buds out. Uh, and let's give it a shot. So I'm going to go straight to the old power supply. Let's uh, plug this in here. Plug our power in there. Grab our keyboard. Again, turn that resting on my lap. And see what we see. So, power on. Oh, okay. We get a signal, but it's not great. And you can see ready there, so that's something. Definitely something else going on there. Okay. So, I mean, yeah, you can see in the background there, the ready prompt is giving video, but it doesn't look like a particularly nice signal. So let's have a look and see what else we've got. Hmm. Could be one of these capacitors, particularly around the RF. Let's see if we can get that can off. from the other side <clears throat> oh, with big beefies okay probably not gonna get that off so nothing looks leaky and I can't see anything obviously wrong up here but it is good that we were getting a signal and we could see basic there but still not what we're looking for. Hmm. I wonder if that could be my video converter not playing well. I am just using a fairly cheap upscaler there. Hmm. Could also be the pot down here, because I know in these systems, what do I need the... Oh, it's got missile command built in. I did not know that. There you go. Okay. Well, yeah, let's have a play around with this pot, because I know some of the earlier systems, especially like the uh, 2600, had a... You could adjust the... Um, uh, sync signal. With a pot on board. Why can I get a screwdriver into there? Oh, let's go for a small one. No, that ain't helping at all. It's jumping around the different sources types, the input types. 
but it's still not giving us a good signal. Let's leave it at. Or it's happy getting a PAL signal. Hmm. How interesting. I'm just playing around to see if I can find any loose connections at the moment. Maybe something's shorted. Don't feel like these are off the joystick inputs. It almost looks like the composite signals being doesn't have the hmm. It's like it's not timed properly. So what in this system handles timing? You know what I'm going to try? Just because we were having power issues before, I'm going to plug this into the... Wait, which one was negative and which one was positive? I can never remember. I'm bad at this. Positive on the outside. Okay. Plug this in the supply maybe with a solid power. We get a good video. Yep, there you go. So it's a power issue at this point. So that power supply is not good either. So it is drawing 0.62 amps. Which is really quite cool. I don't have a joystick handy actually. I might see if I can go and dig up one of my Commodore joysticks. But let's get the keyboard back in. Let's see if we can punch out a quick program. And there you go. And there's the ready prompt. So, 10, print. Hello. World. Done. Twenty. Go to ten. And run. Bam. Basic. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. So, two issues with the system. Uh, first and foremost, the, the the main issue was these faulty RAM chips. So one of these, I'm pretty sure it was this one, uh, was just absolutely cooking when it was plugged in. Um, and it looked to be probably an internal short. I might see if I I'll probably keep these aside. I might straighten out these pins. Bloody I made a hammer that one. But uh, I'll probably see if I can get those tested. Uh, I don't have a RAM tester at the moment, but I do intend on buying one sometime in the near future. So I'll just put those aside. Mark them as faulty until I can get them tested. And the second one was that the built the, the power supply that the customer provided, which is the original Atari, this old hunker power block, which is meant to provide 1.5 amps on 5 volts, doesn't seem to be capable of that anymore. So this is a good example of sometimes old power supplies like these just don't work particularly well. Uh, they get old and they die, especially these older ones that had uh, very old uh, 7805 linear regulators, and they just they, they, they get old over time and they just can't handle load anymore. Uh, case in point, this is what we see when we turn it on with the supply now. It's just not working. So I will recommend to the customer to get a new power supply. I don't think I can do anything with this one. I might be able to pop it open, but a lot of these supplies, I know the Commodore ones in particular, they're just potted in resin inside and you can't really do much with them. But I'm sure someone out there has made a alternate supply. Um, alternatively, what I could probably do, because it is a fairly standard DIN connector, I do have some, what is that, that's a seven pin, I do have some seven pin connectors like this. I might be able to make him something like a, um, like a USB to seven pin connector, so I'll probably recommend that. Uh, and then you can just plug it straight into any just regular USB power supply. Uh, and that'll give you the 5 volts needed to run this system. It's very good that it is off 5 volts, 1.5 amps. I mean, when I was running it then, 
and it was only drawing 600 milliamps, so I can easily run off a, uh, hell, you could run this off a USB power bank. Um, uh, but yeah, so RAM swapped, power supply identified as a fault, but uh, the last thing that I want to do just before give it a bill of health is just tweak that pot again until we get a good looking signal. So there's missile command. Let's go back to where it was because this does adjust color tint. So about there looks pretty good. And I think if you hold down select, yeah, boots into basic. Oh, there's the self test. Huh, didn't know that. There you go, learn something new every day. So let's uh, try a self test. That is select. Uh, so let's do the audio visual and start. Oh yeah, good sound. Yeah, that sounds good too. Also good. Both voice. They all sound fantastic. Right, let's go back to help and we'll go down to the keyboard test. Alright, and we'll uh -huh. okay. oh, break doesn't seem to be working. That's interesting. Let's control. Yeah, caps is good. Shift, yeah, good. Space, yep. Let's try. Control and all those is working, and yeah. Seems to be working well. So let's do the memory test. Uh, select memory, and that's our final test. But I have utter confidence that this is going to work now because everything seems happy. So while that's finishing off, uh, yeah, I just want to say um, that was it. Power, RAM, working board. Get this back to the customer. Hopefully I'll make a, make a power cable for them. Give the uh, just exterior a little bit of a clean up. It's just a little bit, it's just got a little bit of, a little bit of dirt and scunge on it. So I always like to get stuff back in the uh, best of condition. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching.